This video is on factored slash intercept form. We're going to be dealing with quadratic functions. First thing up here, we have all the information that we need to find so that we have enough information to graph a problem. We have the quadratic function, so the parent function for factored intercept form is that f of x equals a parentheses x minus m parentheses x minus n. Again, this gives us our roots, which are the same thing as our x-intercepts, solutions, zeros. So factored intercept form is going to be a factored form, and it will give us our x-intercepts. We're going to determine our minimum or maximum, and as from the quadratic basics, it comes from our a value lets us know if we're going to have opening up or down, so if it's a minimum or maximum. We're going to find our axis of symmetry and our vertex as well. And remember, the axis of symmetry is the x of your vertex. We're going to find our y-intercept where it crosses the y-axis, so the x value is 0. We're going to figure out what the domain is and the range. So remember, the domain for all quadratics should be the same, but the range depends on if we're dealing with a maximum or a minimum. We're also going to be looking at the function notation and figuring out what our key point is so we can write our function notation. So let's look at this first one. f of x equals x plus 3 times x minus 1. Now, for our parent function, because it says x minus m and then x minus n, if I want it to become a positive, because it says x plus, I have to have x minus a negative value to make it a positive. So really, when you're finding your m and n value, your roots, we're going to write them, um, we have to make sure we change that value, that sign, because we already have the negative in there. So like on this one, I already have, I have the x, I have the minus sign already, so then the n is just that one value, it's that positive one. So if I change the sign on that, I get my correct root. So my two x-intercepts are at, I'm going to change that x value, it's at negative 3 actually, because if it said x minus a negative 3, that's how it would say x plus 3. So negative 3 comma 0, and I'm going to change the sign because technically it's just x minus that positive 1. So my x-intercept is at 1 comma 0. Now I look to see, so I have my two x-intercepts. Now I look to see if it's a maximum or minimum, and I look at the a value. So if a is positive, it opens up, and it's a minimum. If a is negative, it opens down, and it's a maximum. My a value is in the front of the parentheses, because it's a parentheses x minus m. So my a right here, I see no number, so that technically is a positive 1. Even though I don't see it, a is a positive 1. A is equal to a positive 1. And remember, that will also help us when we're talking about if it's a vertical stretch, compress, anything like that. So because it's positive, we know it's going to open up. That means we're going to have a minimum. So we're, we will have a minimum value. So when we look at our range, we know if it's a minimum, our range is going to look like this. So now we're going to look for our axis of symmetry. We need our axis of symmetry so we can find the rest of our vertex because I don't don't have a calculator, I don't have a graph, so I can't find it in the graph. I want to find it by hand. So I have my two x-intercepts, and if we know anything about our x-intercepts, they're mirror images of each other. So the vertex is always somewhere in the middle of the entire graph. So I need to find the middle point of this, because the axis symmetry is what gives us symmetry. So we're going to add the x-intercepts, then divide by 2. That's what this means add the two x-intercepts, the actual values we got here, and then divide by 2. So x is going to equal, we got negative 3, and then plus 1. We're going to divide by 2. It's not just the values from in here. It's not that. m is the actual x-intercept. So negative 3 plus 1 is equal to negative 2 divided by 2. So x equals negative 1. That is our axis of symmetry. Now that we have the x value of our vertex, we can find the y. So for vertex, if you have any x value and the equation, you can plug it in to find that y value. So we're going to plug in the AOS for the x value to find the y value. We have the x, we want to find the y.
So our equation, I'm going to rewrite the equation real quick. Instead of f of x, I'm going to put y equals. y equals parentheses x plus 3 parentheses parentheses x minus 1 parentheses. Now I'm plugging in that negative 1 that we just got to get our y value. So y is equal to parentheses negative 1 plus 3 parentheses parentheses negative 1 minus 1. So we have y equals 2 times negative 2 which will equal to a negative 4. So our y value is negative 4. We have an x and a y, so we have our vertex is at negative 1, comma, negative 4. That's our vertex. The next one we're going to find is the y-intercept. Now this one, we know what the x value is because it's the y-intercept. It's where the graph crosses the y-axis when x is 0. So we're going to do the exact same thing we just did with the vertex, but this time we're going to plug x into x equals 0 into the equation. We do have to write it in a coordinate form. So I'm going to write out that equation again. It's y equals parentheses x plus 3 parentheses x minus 1. But this time we're going to plug in the 0. So y equals 0 plus 3 times 0 minus 1, which will equal to, so that's going to be 3 times negative 1, which is negative 3. So our y-intercept is at 0 comma negative 3. Next, we find our domain, and as always, our domain is going to be open bracket, negative infinity, comma, positive infinity, open bracket. The range depended on if it was a minimum or maximum. If A is positive, that means you're going to have a positive infinity. That's a way to know which infinity you will have. So we will have a positive infinity. We do need to know what our minimum value is since it is a minimum. I'm going to put min value. That was that y value of the vertex, so that's still at negative 4. So when we write it out, we know it's a minimum. A is positive, so we're going to have a positive infinity. That's always on the right-hand side. And we put our negative 4 on the left. Close bracket, open bracket. So if it's a minimum, the y of the vertex, comma, positive infinity. That's exactly what that says. And the last thing we're going to do on this problem is write it in function notation. Now, function notation is written as a f of x minus h parentheses plus k. So the a value is the same a value we already had. The h and k is that key point. It's, it's always a key point. It is how it shifts from the origin. Okay, so the h is really how is it moving horizontally, and the k is how is it moving vertically. Now, from the origin. Now, all of your coordinates are actually going to be moving the same amount, like in the same direction um, from the origin. But the thing is, is which coordinate is the main key point? For a quadratic, for a parabola, they don't always have x-intercepts. They do always have a vertex, and they do always have a y-intercept. But which one shows you how it truly shifts from the origin? Because this one's only telling you that it's moving up and down. But the vertex is actually going left and right and also up and down. And if you think about it, your range comes from your vertex and your axis of symmetry comes from your vertex. So the vertex is your key point. Your vertex is your key point. So if f of x is equal to x squared because we need to know that our parent function is tr is truly a quadratic so now we can rewrite function notation with our correct information and we would be able to come up with the correct form so the way we write our function notation is we have our a value which is the same one f of x now the h and the k, since we figured out that this was our vertex, our key point is our vertex, it looks very similar to with the x minus m part. That h is already a negative, but on here I see a negative as well. So if I did a x minus a negative 1, that would end up saying x plus 1. So the h comes before k, so the x comes before y. That means that the h will be your negative 1 and your k will be your negative 4. 
So when we write this in here, that negative h, we have to change that sign to become a positive because x minus a negative 1 really says x plus 1. So the easier way to remember that is just change the x value, the sign on it, and write it in. So it's going to be f of x plus 1. But then we have plus k. So plus a positive is still a positive, and plus a negative is still a negative. So I can remember this as I want to keep that value of k. So keep that sign of k. So negative 4. This actually tells you the transformations that are happening. We know that it's not being stretched or compressed because this is a 1. It's not bigger or smaller than 1. It's not reflecting. And it is moving, though. So the vertex is not at the origin. It actually went to negative 1 on the x-axis, which from the origin to negative 1 is left. But then it went down to negative 4. So we actually went left 1, and we went down 4 from the origin. And that's what function notation actually tells us. That tells us the same thing. So if we change that sign, it says negative 1, and that says negative 4. So function notation just tells us that which way it's trans transforming. So if, is it moving? Is it shrinking? Is it getting bigger? Is it reflecting? That's what function notation does. All right, so on this next one, I'm going to go a little bit quicker. The roots, again, come from your m and n value. It's the inside the parentheses. So our roots are at we got to change this because it's x minus two, negative 2, comma 0, because it is an x-intercept, and 3, comma 0, because we have to change that sign as well. Those are our two roots. Our a value is actually equal to that negative 2. Negative means that it's going to open down, which means it's a maximum. We're going to find our axis of symmetry using the same thing. We're going to do that negative 2 and the 3. So x equals negative 2 plus 3 over 2. So x equals negative 2 plus 3 is 1. Divided by 2 is 1 half. To find your vertex, the rest of your vertex, we have the x value, but we need the y value. We need to plug in the x that we have and get the y out of it. So I'm going to write out the equation, y equals negative 2, parentheses, x plus 2, parentheses, x minus 3. Now I'm going to plug in that x value of 1 half. So y equals negative 2 times 1 half plus 2, and then times 1 half minus 3. Now I did put the 1 half, so you can put uh, 0 0.5 if you need to. This, if you use your calculator or anything, will equal to 12 and a half. So as a coordinate, I'm okay with writing decimals. So this coordinate is at half, so 0 and 5 tenths, comma, 12 and a half. That's our vertex. And again, remember, if you remember, that's our key point for our function notation. The y-intercept, we're going to do the same thing, but instead of putting in half, we're going to put in 0. So again, y equals negative 2, parentheses, 0, plus 2, sorry, x plus 2, parentheses, parentheses, x minus 3. So y equals negative 2, parentheses, 0, plus 2, and 0 minus 3. So that's going to be negative 2 times 2, which is negative 4, times negative 3, which is positive 12. So our y-intercept is at 0, comma, positive 12. Our domain is open bracket, negative infinity, comma, positive infinity, open bracket. Our range, we said we had a maximum earlier, so we have a maximum value. Max value is at that 12 and a half. Okay. So since A was negative, that tells us we're actually going to have a negative infinity. So that negative infinity will always go first. And then we'll put our number, 12 and a half. It doesn't matter what the sign is on the number. It only matters about the sign on the, the infinity on where it goes. So negative infinity is always on the left, and positive infinity is always on the right. The value, positive negative, doesn't matter if it's uh, 
because I can put negative numbers on the right hand side, that's fine. But negative infinity has to go on the left. So for dealing with function notation for this one, I'm going to still use the same function notation, okay, because this is for all functions. We have to know if f of x equals x squared, because that's the original parent function, that's when it's at the origin, it has not shifted, and it tells me it's quadratic. I can say that the function notation, our a value was still negative 2, f of x, the key point was our vertex, so we have, we have to change the sign of the h, so that is going to be negative 0 and 5 tenths, close parentheses, and we're going to keep the value of our y, so that's going to be plus 12 and a half. That is function notation. Again, that tells us where it moves from the origin, and then if it's reflecting, shrinking, and compressing. This last one on this page is f of x equals 1 half x minus 6 squared. Now, if you remember back from factoring, x minus 6 squared really means x minus 6 times x minus 6. It's written out twice. That's actually what that means. This is 1 half x minus 6 x minus 6. So that happens twice. It came from a perfect square trinomial. We technically only have one x-intercept because it's the same thing. Our x-intercept is at 6 comma 0. It happens twice. Technically it happens twice at that value. That also means, um, if you remember back to um, quadratic basics, if you only have one x-intercept, it actually is bouncing on the x axis means that this should also be your vertex. So it touches the x-axis at this point. It bounces. Bounces on x-axis at this point. So our a value is equal to one-half. It's a positive one-half. That means that it, it opens up because it's positive, so it's a minimum. Our AOS x equals m plus n. So technically, since it happens twice, your m is 6, and your n is also 6 divided by 2. So x again is equal to 6. So that lets you know that that actually is your vertex, because if x is equal to 6, the y will have to be 0. And we can still check that by doing the math of it. So plugging in the 6 into here, so we have y equals 1 half, parentheses 6 minus 6, squared. Well, 6 minus 6 is 0. Squared is still 0. Times 1 half is still 0. So this is equal to 0. So we have 6 comma 0. It's the same thing as your vertex. Our y-intercept will be different. y equals 1 half times 0 minus 6 parentheses squared, because remember we're plugging in 0 for the x. 0 minus 6 is negative 6. Squared is 36. And half of 36 is equal to 18. So our y-intercept is 0, 18. Domain is always that negative infinity to infinity. And our range, we said we had a minimum. So we have a min value was at 0. We had a positive a value, so we're going to have a positive infinity. So I'm going to put that positive infinity over here. And we have that zero goes on the left. So the last thing we have to do on this problem is do the function notation, which again comes from our vertex. So if f of x equals x squared, our function notation will be positive one half, because our a value f of x, we're going to change this 6 to become a negative 6, and then plus k, which is our 0, so we don't have to put anything here. So really, this only tells us that it's moving to the right 6 spaces, and this is actually going to be a vertical compressed because it's smaller than 1 half. If you go back to quadratic basics, I talked about that.